I was trying to think this week uh, when I first heard the word kin, and uh, my brain uh, immediately catapulted me back to East Tennessee with times with my granddad. And uh, usually it was after uh, a question I had uh, that granddad would use the word kin. Uh, he'd have been in a conversation with somebody, and I'd say, Granddad, who was that? And he would, and, he, and he'd always use my first and last name. He'd say, Mac Schaefer, don't you know that's your kin? And of course, uh, where my granddad lived, he lived on top of a hill, and, um, and three out of four of the houses that went down that hill were our kin. And not only that, in the small town of Elizabeth in Tennessee, it felt like everybody was our kin. We, we indeed had real family all over the town. And, and so often, Granddad would say to me, Mac Schaefer, that was your kin. You know, second cousin, four times removed, whatever, whatever it was. Well, I just returned yesterday from eight days in St. Louis at the General Assembly with our Presbyterian kin. It is, uh, General Assembly is our biannual national gathering of teaching elders and ruling elders, and those who serve the larger church. There were about 1,200 of us gathered in downtown St. Louis, um, the theme verse for this past week was Matthew uh, 6, verse 33. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And throughout the week, uh, pastors and teachers and clergy and others who spoke to this uh, verse, as hopefully you've noticed from our liturgy today, dropped the G in kingdom and spoke of the kingdom. I have mentioned and talked to you over my nine years here a lot about the kingdom of God. Uh, that doesn't mean that we uh, yet really have an understanding of, of this concept. I, I think I've told you over and over again that Jesus talked about the kingdom of God more than anything else. And often in Christian circles, we have the misconception that the kingdom of God is something that's in the future. Well, it is in the future, but it is something that was inaugurated by God through Jesus Christ in the time that he walked the earth, he would say the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is now. So for us, as followers of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is past, it is present, and it is future. And it is always something, as followers of Christ, that we are trying to live into. And what our brothers and sisters were trying to get in our heads at General Assembly by speaking of the kin dumb of God, is if we think about Jesus' ministry, it was always a ministry of trying to make the kingdom of God wider. That's what he would do in his ministries, breaking down barriers between people, uh, breaking down class distinctions, and trying to expand who we are as kingdom people in our Lord Jesus Christ. During my time at General Assembly uh, in the plenary sessions, where that was when all 530-something um, commissioners uh, were together, uh, the moderators would have us turn around and face uh, some of the other commissioners who were there, and we would have kingdom time, a little time of fellowship. And, and uh, us folks from uh, New Hope Presbytery here in this part of North Carolina would turn around and face the national capital uh, Presbytery folks. And one of the persons in that group that we shared fellowship time, kingdom time with, was Don Meeks. 
And on Friday, Don turned out to be one of our preachers uh, in, in worship as we were all together. So it was fun to see somebody I had just been sharing fellowship with take the pulpit. And Don uh, spoke of the times we are in, uh, hard times in finding unity, unity as a culture, but also unity as Christians. So he shared with us his covenant, his covenant that he had made with himself and with God, his covenant of pursuing Christian unity in times of disagreement. And he had five points, and I have, um, there's not enough for all of you, but at the end of the pews, I put some of these cards uh, that he spoke of, and maybe you can look on together or share them, or I'll make you a copy after worship. Sorry, choir, you'll have to listen. (laughs) Here they are. Number one, he said, I will pray for and live towards unity with other Christians. I will pray for and live towards unity with other Christians. And as he read that first one, I thought to myself, sometimes our greatest disagreements can be with those we are closest to. Isn't that true? With our family and with our fellow Christians. Number two, he said, I will acknowledge my own prejudices, excesses, and failings before I attempt to criticize or correct other Christians. I will acknowledge my own prejudices, excesses, and failings before I attempt to criticize or correct other Christians. We all know that great Christian verse, that great great biblical verse, I will look at the log in my own eye before I look at the speck in someone else's eye. Number three, I think, is the hardest. It's, it's the one that uh, I found myself praying over the most after I received these. I will trust that the intentions of those with whom I disagree are honorable and speak the best of what I see in their efforts to serve Jesus Christ. I will trust that the intentions of those with whom I disagree are honorable and speak the best of what I see in their efforts to serve Jesus Christ. That may be uh, what we are struggling with the most culturally, our ability to trust what are the motives, are the motives of the person I am in disagreement with? Are are they honorable? Um, Do they have have, um, good intentions? And and, and putting our trust out there uh, can be one of the most difficult things. Number four, I will seek to listen with understanding before speaking my own concern. I will speak to listen with understanding before speaking my own concern. And I I love this, and I know you've heard it before, but it bears repeating that God gave us two ears and one mouth. And uh, there may be a point to that, uh, that we have double ears. And finally, five I will contend for my convictions, and it's so important that this is number five, by the way. I will contend for my convictions with gentleness and respect of reverence for Jesus Christ. So really, our attention shifts from the other person that we are talking to 
but reverence to Christ as we convey our own convictions at number five within the conversation. Uh, Don Meeks went on to quote an email devotion uh, that uh, he received. It was from the Reverend uh, Charlie Drew, who reflects once a month in, in these emails on uh, Christian civics. Uh, and in his devotion, Drew honestly wrestles with what he sees in people today. Uh, he began by quoting a newspaper article that said this, Watch and listen to politically polarized commentary today, and you will see that it is more contemptuous than angry, overflowing with sneering, mockery, and disgust. Studies on the subject have shown that whereas simple anger is characterized by short-term attack responses, but long-term reconciliation. Whereas contempt is characterized by rejection and social exclusion in both the short-term and the long-term. And Drew goes on in the article to say that Christians must be, must be, and how we conduct ourselves with each other, a living alternative to contempt. A living alternative to contempt. I think he is so right about contempt. Contempt is something that seems to sow its seeds deep within us, and it is so very difficult once it is there to untangle it ourselves. Jesus, in our stark disagreements and repulsions of other people's views, would never call us, never call us to postures of contempt. While working together for the kingdom of God, we must self-monitor our levels of contempt. For while standing up for what we perceive as just does not mean destroying the one we perceive as unjust. To the contrary, we must love. And when I speak of love, I speak of strong love in that situation. We must not nurture the tangible vines of contempt for others in our heart. For the kingdom of God is wide, and it is filled with a plethora of people we have nothing in common with other than, and particularly in the kingdom of God, being brothers and sisters in Christ. So in light of these thoughts, I say, we say, come, kingdom. Come. Amen.